the light of the silvery moon danced over the calm water of the lake. It woke Maura from her slumber. The spirit came to life, drinking in the moonlight and slowly forming the silver shimmering outline of a girl. She danced across the water through the woodland paths heading towards the village. She gently ran her silvery fingers along the back of a sleeping cow as she glided through the meadow. The cow shivered at her touch and murmured a moo as it slipped into a dream of faraway pastures of luscious green grass. She twirled as she danced over the bridge into the village itself. The moon was bright tonight and she could form a much clearer outline than normal. She skipped from house to house, stroking the faces of the sleeping villagers, taking her time to drink in the dreams, particularly of the children. Finally, she reached her favourite house. Here, the dreams were vivid and far off places she longed to see. Maura could not leave the lake for long, and it was her heartfelt desire to see more of the world than her lake and village. It was said that her desires influenced the dreamers she attended, and the village was known for its wandering, adventurous spirit. In this last house, the dreams of far-off lands and travel were particularly vivid and exciting. She had often lingered here on the cloudless nights she could escape the water. The child's room was where she lightly skipped, stroking her cheek as she saw her dreams of jungles and of a vast tropical river. Maura was so captivated with the sights of toucans, parrot squawking and bright green plants that she forgot herself and yelped as a lurid green frog jumped on the head of the girl. The child immediately awoke to see a spirit girl standing over her. A ghost! she exclaimed. Maura froze and looked amazed at the girl. You can see me. Yes, I can certainly see through you. You have a silvery outline, she said sitting up as Mara swept away. Her silvery mist swirled, making her blurry. Who are you? You dream so vividly, and yet only witches can see spirits. She examined the slender girl in her pyjamas, her dark hair braided with lively brown eyes. You don't look like a witch. You are a spirit. That explains why you are see-through. I'm not a witch. I'm a child. What were you dreaming of? It looked amazing, so different to hear. The girl smiled. The jungles of the Amazon. My mum is there. I imagine that is what it's like. Is it far away? Yes, very. The girl looked sad. I'm Tam, by the way. Who are you and why are you here? I'm Maura, a water spirit of the lake. When it's a cloudless night, I can drink in the moonlight and take a form. I can travel as far as the village, but I would love to go further. I can only travel in the dreams of the people near the lake. The dreams of you and your mum are always the best. Mountains, jungles, cities, forests and deserts. All so strange and new. Our village is known for our adventurous spirit. Say you. Yes, I suppose it is. I must exert some influence of my longing when I touch your dreams. Maura shivered and glanced at the window. Clouds are coming. I must return to the lake. I can only leave the lake water in the moonlight. Come and see me again, Maura, when it's the next cloudless night. I will see you then. The spirit dashed away through the wall, racing the clouds back to the lake. As the clouds crossed the moon, her silvery form disappeared into a fine mist, melting into the lake water. A faint smile was the last thing to vanish. Tam picked up her notebook and drew a sketch of Maura. It was hard to capture her shifting shape and wrote down all she saw and heard, then settled back to bed. The following day had a cloudless sky. Tam was late to rise, but had slept enough to get through the day. At dinner, she decided to ask her grandpa about Maura. Any other grown-up would say she dreamt it, but her grandpa had an open mind for stories and the magic of the world. Grandpa, are the spirits of the lake? He looked up from his newspaper. Yes, they dance at night in the moonlight. It is said that it is the adventurous spirit of the lake that gives this village its lust for adventure and travel. Why do you ask? I saw a spirit last night in the moonlight. Her name is Maura. She said only witches can see the spirit. Am I a witch? Not as far as I can tell tomorrow. Spirits are old beings, and the knowledge of them has probably passed a long time ago. If you saw this spirit, then I would say it's not just witches who can see them. He put down his newspaper and took off his reading glasses. What did this spirit do? Not all spirits are friendly to Mara. She was just interested in my dreams of the jungle. She longs to leave the lake and see the world. She seemed friendly. You could be deceived. These spirits can play tricks to get what they want. There was once a spirit that used their powers with dreamers for a darker purpose in the village. 
The spirit was captured and banished, but caused great harm. Do you think she deceived me? Grandpa looked at her concerned. I don't know this Maura's purpose. She may be as she seems. He grasped her hand. You must call me if you see it again. Promise me. Yes, I will, Grandpa. That night, Tam waited a while for Maura, but must have drifted off. Maura appeared in her dream as a real girl. They were climbing a mountain. Tam felt a shiver and awoke. There was Maura, fainter than previous night. Where were you in your dream? We were climbing Mont Blanc, or at least what I think Mont Blanc might be from my mum's description. I've never been. Would you like to go there? Yes, I want to travel, just like my mum, and see the jungles and the mountains and cross the seven seas. Ah, the sea. I would like to see that. It's much rougher than my lake, I think. And has pirates. Well, that's what the village dreams, anyway. My mum says she's going to take me to see Peru in the summer holidays. She said I can go on her expedition there. It's the first time she's going to let me come. You are leaving. Just for the summer, I'll be back with even more dreams. I wish I could come, but your dreams will have to do. Grandpa came into the room. Tamara, I heard noises. Is Maura here? Yes, Grandpa, over there. Can't you see her? No, Tamara, I can't, he said, searching the corner with his eyes. Maura, Tamara has school tomorrow, and it is late. Will you let her sleep? Yes, of course, I will go. Tam looked dismayed. Will you come again? When the night is clear and the moonlight is shining. Good night, Tam. She flew through the wall and disappeared into the night. Grandpa had positioned himself in front of Tam and was still staring at the corner of the room. Has she gone? Yes. I wonder why you can't see her, Grandpa. Go to sleep now, my little Tamara. Grandpa tucked in Tam and left the room thoughtfully. The next couple of nights were rainy, so Tam slept peacefully, dreaming of adventures with Maura. Finally, a fine day came with a likely clear night too. Tam couldn't wait to see her friend that night. She waited and waited. Eventually she fell asleep. She woke to the sounds of a woman chanting outside the house. She ran over to the window and there was a curious sight. Magdalene, the old lady the children called the witch from the valley, was stood below her window, waving her arms in a circular dance, chanting in a low murmur. Wispy white clouds were forming a circle in the air and Tam suddenly realised in the centre of the circle of clouds was Maura desperately changing shape and howling. Maura! shrieked Tam and ran downstairs to the front door that led onto the scene. The door was open and Grandpa stood there and grabbed her and held her close. I can see Maura now. Magdalene will deal with her and she won't bother you any more. As he spoke, Magdalene's arms swept to the ground and the clouds with Maura encased were sucked into a large jam jar. Magdalene quickly screwed the lid on. What have you done? She's my friend! Perhaps, Phineas, we should go have a cup of tea, suggested Magdalene, pulling her shawl over her shoulders and swiftly putting the jar into a large decorative bag. Grandpa gently pulled Tam into the kitchen and closed the door behind them all. What did you do, said Tam, still in shock at what she saw. You can't trust spirits, Tamara. Maura could be dangerous. After your teacher called to say you slept in class, I asked Magdalene's help to stop her visiting you. You need your sleep. Is she gone? What's happened to her? Tam turned to the old lady who had sat gently on a chair at the head of the table. She is unharmed, Tamara. I captured her. Magdalene pulled out the jam jar she had seen Maura sucked into. It had water sloshing around in it, but no sign of the spirit. Tam looked closely, but she could not see how Maura could be in the jar. She is in the lake water, said Magdalene. She tapped one of her many gold ring fingers on the jar as she swirled the water. Your grandpa asked me to capture her to stop her haunting you. But she's harmless. She didn't haunt me like a ghost. She just wanted to see my dreams of far off lands. She wants to adventure, but she's trapped at the lake. Don't imprison her because of me. I can't have her visiting you in the night. It's too risky. Grandpa placed the tea things on the table. Tamara, I just don't want anything to happen to you in my care. That's an interesting phrase. Magdalene looked crossly at Grandpa. I think it would be far worse to have nothing ever happen to you than something terrible, especially for a young person with such a spark of curiosity like Tamara here. But Grandpa, you can't leave her in there. That's worse than her being trapped at the lake. She's a spirit of the lake, not a jam jar. 
Perhaps Tamara has a point, Phineas. The lake will not be happy with the loss of its spirit, and it may cause a lot of problems for this village, especially as so much is dependent on the lake. Magdalene set down her tea. Can I suggest a compromise? Grandpa sat down in his chair. I am listening. I will free Maura on the condition that she does not seek out Tamara again. How does that sound? The spirit will be free and Tamara will get her sleep. This Maura is a spirit. How can you be sure that it won't be tricksy or just ignore you? I will make the promise binding. If you are sure she won't return, I will ensure she doesn't seek out Tamara again. Very well then. Magdalene finished her cup of tea, swept up her shawl, picked up the jar and led them back outside. Once again, she made a swirl of clouds above the jar. Phineas, can you open the jar, please, in the centre of the circle? Grandpa opened the jar and Maura swirled out and back into shape, looking about her. The child and the spirit shrieked at each other. Maura! Tam! Grandpa held Tam back. Magdalene called out to the frightened Maura. Spirit of the lake, I will free you to return to the lake if you abide by this condition. You must not seek out Tamara again. Maura looked miserable. Let me go. Only if you swear by the moonlight that you will not seek out Tamara again. Maura sharpened into focus. I will swear. Maura, spirit of the lake, you must say the words. Maura looked sadly at Tam and then turned to Maglin and began to say the words. I, Maura, spirit of the lake, swear by the moonlight to never seek out Tamara again. With this, Magdalene lowered her arms and the cloud circle disappeared. Maura glanced sadly at Tam and disappeared in a shimmering mist that headed towards the river. Maura! She's gone, Tamara, back to the lake. Grandpa released his grip and Tam sank to the ground. And she won't come again? Swearing by the moonlight is binding to this spirit. She will not seek out Tamara again. Magdalene picked up her bag, nodded at Grandpa. I'm staying at the Crown until the day after tomorrow. It looks like a good day for collecting meadow flowers tomorrow. Good night. She ambled off into the night, her jewellery clinking and chiming with every step. Tam slowly headed back inside to bed. That night, she dreamt of seeing her mother in Peru, and as so often happens with a bright and imaginative mind, woke up with an idea. As Magdalene had predicted, the next morning was glorious. Tam ate her breakfast in a happier mood than Grandpa expected. He wanted to ask her about how she felt, but decided to leave it as she was in such a positive mood. Grandpa, I'm going down to the village to call on Ellie. I will see you later. With this lie, she walked out into the sunshine and headed for the crown. Rosie, the owner, was outside watering the hanging baskets. Hi, Rosie. Is Magdalene still here? No, she's gone out, but she'll be back later. She is staying tonight. Do you know where she went? She didn't say, but she did mention something about picking up some flowers. Tam remembered Magdalene had mentioned the meadow last night. Thanks, Rosie. She ran over to the bridge, out of the village and into the meadow. There she saw Magdalene in a wide-brimmed sun hat, crouching down in a field. Ah, Tamara, would you help me collect some more of these purple flowers? Tamara knelt down and started picking. What do you use them for? These? They are very pretty. I figure Rosie may like some to brighten up the crown. She laid down her flowers and sat on the grass. Now you are here to ask about your spirit friend. Yes, I feel bad. It's not her fault. She enjoyed my dreams. She looked up at the old lady who was now rummaging around in her bag. What is Maura? I know she's a spirit of the lake, but what does that mean? That's a good question. Spirits can be those lost souls trapped between this life and the next. But in this case, I believe she's a water spirit formed of the life force of the lake. She said she longed to adventure and see more of the world. Yes, I've been thinking about that. Perhaps she's an old spirit from a time many thousands of years ago, when the lake was connected to the sea. A sea-wandering spirit locked into the land. Should she return to the sea then? I don't think she would like that, having spent so long in the waters of the lake. It's nice to travel, but to never be able to return to your home? Even your mother would dislike that, she chuckled to herself. Could she travel further away from the lake in a jam jar, like the one you captured her in? 
Yes, so long as you have lake water, she's able to stay in the jar. Even all the way to the sea? Yes, but there would be nothing to stop her travelling, say, to Peru and back in a jam jar. It doesn't matter anyway, I can't help her. Can't you? Magdalene had a twinkle in her eye. The oath was binding. The oath was for her not to seek you out. There's no mention of you seeking her out. Tam looked excited. But I'm not a witch. I can't do the spells to put her in the jar. You think I'm a witch? Well, anyway, there is no magic required. If she wants to, she can go in the jar of her own accord. You can seal it. She will be just fine, even on an aeroplane. This is all theoretical, of course. Magdalene winked and went back to her flowers. I don't suppose you have a spare jar I can have, said a grinning Tam. Have a look in my bag over there. Now make yourself useful and pick those mushrooms. Tam waited patiently through the next few cloudless nights. She knew Grandpa would be listening, unsure if the oath was truly binding. On the fourth night, she could hear him snoring away and snuck out, grabbing her rucksack from the kitchen. She walked through the village, across the bridge and quickly got her small head torch out to light the way. At the lake's edge, she called out to her friend. Maura, Maura, spirit of the lake, spirit of adventure, where are you? Maura appeared behind her. Tam, I was in the village, but you should not be here. I made an oath. It's okay. Magdalene told me I can seek you out, just not the other way round. Maura smiled. And here you are, but you can't sleep here. It's too cold. I'm not here to share my dreams. I have a plan to make yours come true. She pulled out the jar. Maura looked angry. You want to imprison me too? She started speeding out onto the lake. No, no, no. Come back. I want you to come willingly. Magdalene told me I can take you away from the lake in a jar with some lake water. I want to take you to Peru with me. We can see the world together. Maura whistled round Tam in excitement. Yes, I can. I can see the world. She whooshed into the jar. Wait, Maura, it's another month before I go. We should wait until nearer the day to put you in the jar. Yes, of course. Maura did somersaults over the lake for joy. Two weeks later, Tam's mother arrived home with new stories, adventures and pictures, and they began to plan and pack for her Peru adventure. With a few days to go, Tam collected the lake water and Maura swirled inside her jar. On the day of her leaving, she placed her backpack on the table and ran over to hug Grandpa. I will miss you tomorrow. It will be so quiet. Don't worry, Grandpa. You'll be able to do all that fishing you talk about. He laughed and looked over her shoulder. The jam jar was poking out the top of her bag where she hadn't zipped it up. Is that? Mum called. Time to go, Tamara. She kissed him, grabbed her bag and ran out the door. They headed off to Peru for a grand adventure. That summer, it was said that the village lost its spark. The children played nicely. No one got lost exploring in the woods for the first time in many years. The villagers stayed local and enjoyed their village. At the Crown, the talk was subdued with little to say. But when September came and Tam opened up the jar on a moonlit night, the spirit of adventure came back. The spark was lit into a flame and all of the village dreams once again were of adventure and exploring. Maura, The Spirit of Adventure, is a story by Nick Knack. Please feel free to subscribe. Thanks.